and welcome to the Alliance for Democracy's The Populist Dialogues. Our program promotes progressive, populist perspectives on the issues of the day. The Alliance for Democracy is dedicated to establishing true democracy and creating a just society based on an equitable, sustainable economy. Our guest today is Nakisha Nathan. Nakisha is the climate justice organizer with the Oregon Sierra Club. So welcome to the program. Thank you, thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. So talk about why we talk about environmental justice when we talk about the environment. Are they the same? If we address environment, do we address environmental justice at the same time? Well, they should be. And I think for some folks, uh, some organizations, addressing the environment is environmental justice work. Uh, but I think that uh, in the United States, the history of environmentalism really did center on, on conserving a kind of an image of the environment uh, that could be enjoyed by the elite few, um, white men who had money. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of that, any efforts to protect the environment that followed really still kind of had that same um, that same perspective, even though it might not have been intentional. It would the groundwork had already been laid. The foundation was there, and that meant excluding the voices and the decision making powers and the experience of people who also live in the environment and are part of the environment. Um, uh, Native Americans. African Americans, immigrants, uh, migrant labor. So these are all people who know a lot about how their interactions with the environment, um, whether it's the natural, pristine environment or the built environment, impacts um, their lives, um, the ecosystem that they're in, and the lives of future generations. So when we uh, at Sierra Club and when I do work to protect the environment, it's really, uh, we've recognized and I recognized at an early age that it's about um, understanding that wherever we are is the environment. Mm -hmm. And anyone who lives in that space and works in that space, plays there, um, worships there, those are all, people and organisms, members of that ecosystem that need to be cared for mm -hmm. and need to have a say in what that care looks like and how it takes shape. Okay. And, and of course, the perspective of white middle class or upper class men in mm -hmm. particular can be quite different than the perspective and the needs Absolutely. of people of color, for instance. Yeah, I think it's um, going to be very hard to get you can't, you can't really solve a problem that affects um, multiple layers of a society uh, and a community with just the one perspective. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, I, don't, I, I don't know everything that's gonna impact you and, and how decisions that I make are gonna impact you. Um, I'd like to think that I could make some good decisions for you, but there's some things I'm just not gonna know. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we all need to be at the table, we all need to be able to to um, to contribute and be heard and make decisions for the betterment of, of mm -hmm. our communities. So. Yeah, it's, so your work at the Sierra Club uh, is to get more people to the table? It's to get more people to the table, definitely. Um, but I'm focused right now, I just started at Sierra Club um, about eight months ago. So I'm primarily focused on building new relationships and strengthening the relationships that I already have with members of this community here mm -hmm. in the Portland metro area and and beyond even through mm -hmm. you know throughout Oregon mm -hmm. um, and so I, I I don't see my job as as one um, that entails organizing um, in a low-income community or a rural community organizing those folks to come over to Sierra Club and join our base and do our work. Mm -hmm. I see my job as being one that is to establish relationships with folks in, in these various communities, um, meet the leaders and find out how do we work together and how do we increase our collective power. So um, mm -hmm. while that's happening, <laughs> I definitely want to um, 
uh, increase our members and you know really facilitate um, more kind of uh, a sort of awakening I think for other folks who were ready for that and want to join um, either the work of Sierra Club or the work that's being done mm -hmm. with these other organizations. Okay, yeah, great. So uh, one of the phrases that we hear in this work is just transition. Yeah, so w what, 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 is, what is a just transition? How, how do we know, um, that, how do we recognize a just transition? Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So, you know, first of all, this is, this framework um, and this concept um, as, a, as I'm starting to describe it is somewhat new. It's one of these, oh duh, I, I did know that, I just didn't really have the language around it. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm um, still having a lot of great conversations and learning and reading a lot more about what a just transition is and what it looks like. But it's, you know, I think transition is inevitable um, and so a just transition is when you uh, transition away from, in this con in, in our economy, in our current state, uh, you're transitioning away from um, an exploitive, extractive economy to one that's regenerative and cooperative. And um, the, that's, uh, yeah, that's it in a nutshell for me. Okay. That's all right, yes. Yeah. So can you talk about the differences between an extractive economy uh, versus a regenerative uh, economy? Yeah, sure. So, um, in an extractive economy, well, first let's talk about economy and, yeah. and what that is. Um, so, if you break down the word economy, um, it's really the management of home. Eco is uh, home. It's it's a the Greek meaning is home. It comes from the word oikos and uh, onomy is or nomi is uh, management. So, how do we manage our home spaces? Um, and so the, the current management of, of our environment, of our home, is one that is based on uh, a pillar, one pillar where we have resources. Where do we get those resources from? We extract them. We mm -hmm. dig them um, out of the ground. We blow up mountainsides. We uh, cut down forests and we burn those materials. Uh, and then who does that work and how is that work done? Uh, you know, we have manual laborers who do that, and um, they get paid very little. It's exploitive work. Uh, they, you know, they have very little say in how it, how it works and what it looks like for them. Um, and then the purpose, like, what's the purpose? This this pillar around the purpose of this economy is to really keep wealth in the hands of the few. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that's all kind of shared through this worldview that, um, that really just values uh, a consumeristic society. Um, and then it's the, the fifth pillar is one that's based on governance. And the governance in this extractive economy is carried out through militarism, uh, police forces. Uh, so. When you transition into a regenerative economy, looking at all those same pillars that I just described, looking at your pillars that uh, include resources, pillars that include how people work, how work is done, um, the pillar of um, how the purpose of this economy, the worldview of that economy, and how it's governed, uh, those all shift. So you could probably guess how uh -huh. they shift in a regenerative economy. They're based mm -hmm. on cooperation, caring, the regenerative resources. Uh, yeah, so. Okay, uh, all right, so, so a very different, very different perspective on how you relate to each other mm -hmm. and how we relate to nature. Yeah. Then, then is than what we currently, I, I, I think that most people like this idea of, of uh, regenerative uh, ecology and economy, but don't see how we can ever get there. Mm -hmm. uh, any? I think part of that reason is because we spend a lot of time um, thinking in, in terms of a really massive economy. The scale is quite large. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, we've either forgotten how to or we are distracted from for whatever reason we, it's thinking 
you know, drawing that power down uh, and those decision making capabilities down and really focusing there um, is something that isn't happening as much. So I think that, um, yeah, I think it's important, you know, when you when you look at how we govern that you start, you know, with yourself mm -hmm. and the, and your community, your immediate community. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So would my would my relating to nature by having a a uh, garden where I don't use pesticides and chemicals to grow things would that be part of a regenerative uh, environment? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I feel good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's where a lot of folks start too. Uh -huh. um, you know, my grandfather even um, he he had a garden and. It was definitely regenerative to him, and we would talk about it, and he, he would say, well, I, I have this garden because I like to watch things grow. And I think just being able to sit in communion with the land mm -hmm. and to be able to learn from it and recognize your relationship to it, with it, and, and how uh, you have a hand in either contributing to that growth or harming that growth. Mm -hmm. And I think once people start to really realize that, they recognize how much um, power they have and, um, and how important it is to, to wield that <laughs> yeah. in a way that's really uh, a lot more relational. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's, I mean, I, if, if we start talking a lot about uh, how our interactions with the land benefit the land and us, I'll start to kind of geek out a bit, but oh, okay. it's, I love it. I love the biology and uh -huh. the chemistry of it um, and the spirituality of it also. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then on a larger scale, I think that uh, when I am opposed to war and militarization in particular, uh, increasing of uh, the U.S. in particular, war budgets, you know, which we uh, refer to as defense, Mm -hmm. uh, then I feel like I'm moving in that same direction or, or having expressing those values. Absolutely, yeah. Opposition is key. Um, it's important to expose where and how our, our economy and our community is, is um, not life-affirming, life-enabling. Um, and part of the just transition is focusing on stopping the bad, include mm -hmm. stopping the bad. Uh, but you've also got to build the new. So while you are oppositional, it's important to be visionary. And you've got to envision the world that you want to live in and work to create that world. Mm -hmm. And, and that, again, that's, that's where um, drawing down that power and doing so locally is, is important. Uh, yeah, if we spend a lot of time kind of fighting and working to stop the bad, we get so wrapped up in the fight that, uh, that the, the life enabling um, community that we can build is is harder to achieve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was just uh, thinking of a guest we had here a couple weeks ago, Aaron Brown, who is heading up a, a group called No More No More Freeway Expansions PDX, mm -hmm. uh, talking about spending four hundred uh, cl close to half million dollars of expanding a uh, less than mile long part of I five and how that opposition is part of what we're talking about. But he also talks about the vision mm -hmm. of what we want to do. What would we do with that money if we could do uh, things that were, uh, that were a vision of where we want to be? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, okay, this is, this, is, this is good because I wanted to have some, some uh, examples of how we actually work at creating just transition. So this is good. Right. Um, talk about the connection between just transitions and something called deep democracy. What's the difference between deep democracy and what we generally refer to as democracy? So yeah, this one, um, it's a great question because I'm, it's still emerging for me. I think at its heart, it's simple and, and that deep democracy is really about making sure that um, the people have the opportunity, uh, the, the, the barriers to making decisions, influencing decisions are removed. Uh, and so 
right now, you know, our democracy is one in where we, we can go and we can vote to say, okay, um, I trust you to make the right decisions for me. And then if you have the capabilities and the time um, and the understanding to, to, of how to participate further than you can, you know, you can go and lobby your legislators or you can sit on commissions and um, uh, where you can run for city council, but there, there are different levels of participation. And uh, I, I think that the scale at which that participation is happening is not as localized. So, you know, we're not looking in our own community, on our own block, you know, so starting even smaller and looking at neighborhood associations and who's attending and how do we get there mm -hmm. um, is, is definitely um, something that I think needs to happen more. From what I'm seeing, it's just it's the, there's too many barriers to be able to participate deeply mm -hmm. in our democracy. So it, the foundation is there. There's opportunities to expand upon it, grow, grow our democracy. But it's it's just really hard because folks are struggling to survive, let yeah. alone to thrive. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. deep, deep democracy is really also about being able to thrive in your community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's so when you use community, it sounds like you're talking local. I am. I am definitely talking a lot more locally. Mm -hmm. Right. Know, okay. Uh, so, uh, thinking about the globalization of the economy, which has happened, well, it's been happening for a very long time, but particularly in the last thirty years, uh, those are really things that get in the way of transitions, ju just transitions. Uh, yeah. It's so. It's funny because right when I said when I when I said I, I think it is locally um, something you know you you start at the local level. Um, I think because of where we are with globalization and recognizing how um, you know colonialism in the in the global South uh, impacts community our communities, um, at, you know our our communities in the global South. It's, I, I definitely am becoming more aware of the fact that when we make decisions here without thinking about what's happening somewhere else and how it's impacting another country or city or state, mm -hmm. um, then, then that's also detrimental um, for us. You know, it, might, it might be great for our little tight-knit local community, but in the long run, because we are... Um, not isolated we're not in a silo it is important to think about that mm -hmm. you know so I think it's thinking starting locally but then being able to expand and think more broadly mm -hmm. so I can share an example if, yes, if you please. like okay yes, so do. um so right now the, you know uh, there's a big conversation that's happening statewide um and and in other states in the nation on um curbing climate pollution carbon reducing greenhouse gas emissions and so there's a cap and trade and invest system that's being looked at um, in Oregon, it's known as clean energy jobs. And so it's one of the things I'm working on and I'm excited about it for a lot of reasons. There's also a lot of concerns on, on what happens with a cap and invest policy. Uh, particularly, you know, when you look at what's happened in California with their cap and invest system and how it's impacted uh, frontline communities poor folks and low, in, low income and people of color living in uh, industrial areas where there are refineries who are able to, because of this cap and trade system, uh, pollute at higher rates and, you know, increasing greenhouse gas emissions uh, like carbon doesn't necessarily uh, impact the health of a community, but the co-pollutants that are emitted at the same time do. And so if they're able to increase the, uh, the amount of pollution they're emitting because of things like offsets that are part of this system, then, and those offsets are programs that are benefiting our communities here in Oregon, that's, it's great. That means Oregon has money. Mm -hmm. um, communities in Oregon might have more money to do things like build transit-oriented development or or manage a forest ecosystem better, uh, but that's at the expense of a community right. in another in another city, another yeah. frontline community. Mm -hmm. 
and so there's some sense there's a recognition that this is a time for solidarity and there have been for far too long we've been exploiting one another um, in order to to survive mm -hmm. uh, and you know I think a tra just transition is one that doesn't exploit anybody else mm -hmm. so that we can gain. Yeah, as you were talking, I, I um, was thinking about Lincoln County, and Lincoln County recently passed a a ban on aerial spraying, uh, and uh, it seems like that kind of fits. This is you know, aerial spraying is is something that has an effect locally um, because you. Know, we shouldn't be sprayed mm -hmm. <laughs> with with chemicals, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, uh, the uh, ag country uh, companies would say, yeah, we do need to because otherwise we can't grow the food that everybody needs. But so there may be some benefit for quote unquote everybody, but locally, uh, they're experiencing the negative effects, like the consequences of doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, it would seem like. Uh, in that case, in the case of Lincoln County, they're just saying, no, we know what's best in our community, what's best for us. Uh, we need to take control of that. Um, yeah, I think uh, I, that's, I'm curious about, about that situation. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, it was, it was interesting because it was on the bell and it was saying that within our boundaries, you are not going to do this. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I was bringing that local decision making uh, down to the local level. Uh, the state of Oregon uh, and the companies said, no, Lincoln County, you can't make that decision. And it's actually gone to the courts now for, for them to work out. But it is a, a, a clear example yeah, of that's how being local, uh, you can realize what your interests are mm -hmm. and you should be able to act on them. I'm sorry. I'm, no, I, that's I just great. took over as being the guest. <laughs> no, that's uh, that is a, a very clear example, and I think um, I think it's also a good example of why um, you can't be siloed in your in your community because there there's I'm sure uh, opportunities to connect with other other um, communities that have done similar work. Um, farmers, uh, there's there's solutions that that address everybody's problem in this situation, mm -hmm. and I think the the problem is that we haven't figured out how to make sure that we've got the right folks at the table, mm -hmm. everybody at the table. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, and, and and so much of our history has been specifically how do we exclude people from being yeah. at the table? Yeah. How do we exclude them from having their voices heard? Mm -hmm. And not just heard, but how do we exclude the facts and making decisions? Um, right, and so this whole idea of just transitions and deep democracy addresses that uh, and saying, yes, yeah. they should be included. Yes, we should be included. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So let me let me ask you one one more question because we're, we're we're down to four minutes. <laughs> um, does Mother Earth have rights? Absolutely. Talk about that. Absolutely. Uh, well, this is big topic. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's you know sometimes I think there are some things that I think um, it's inherent, it's intrinsic, it's it's kind of like a well, duh, of course. And so then when I'm asked to deconstruct that question a little bit more, uh, I, I think it's a little bit harder to do because it's something that I feel deeply at my core and I think it's because of my experiences growing up. So, um, so look, we're all, we're all organisms on this earth. Humans are animals. And I think a lot of times we forget that. Mm -hmm. um, we've, we've somehow separated ourselves from the notion that we're animals. We're, we are, and um, we are part of a, a community of an ecosystem that depends on how we interact with it, just in the same way that we depend on other organisms and processes. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have a hard time imagining that we have more rights than anything else any any other creature um, or the planet as a whole um, 
just because we are human. Mm -hmm. So if we, if we continue to act as if we're the only ones who have rights, um, it's, it's the same as ignoring the other people at the table, the other people in our community and having barriers to their voices. Mm -hmm. um, the only difference is we're, you know, we're not, while we have a, a, the ability to change a lot on this planet, uh, the climate for one, um, if, if we are not here anymore, I think that the planet will find a, a, a way around that. You know, uh, you it will find a way to assert its rights. Uh, yes. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, yes, right, yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. it has rights whether or not we recognize them or not. Mm -hmm. and, and I think the planet will assert those rights. Um, and I, th I, th I think we see the planet asserting its rights. I think we do. I think right. we see oh, it, yeah. and feel it, and smell uh -huh. it. And uh, yeah. You know, it's been getting in our eyes and choking up our yeah. lungs. And, and the question is, will we will we notice? Will we respond mm -hmm. in a way that's, um, uh, that allows us to continue to exist in some semblance of, of what we're familiar with? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 All right. Good. Great. Thank you so much for being Thank here. Thank you. All right. All right. We've been talking with Nakisha Nathan, climate justice organizer with the Oregon Sierra Club. As suggested additional uh, reading, I would suggest an article from the organization Movement Generation and their ecology, you know, their justice and ecology project. The article is titled From Banks and Tanks to Cooperation and Caring. Have you missed one of our programs? Want to watch something again or suggest a friend watch? Well, you can do that as all of our Populist Dialogue programs are saved to our webpage. Visit www.populistdialogues.org to view past programs or, when viewing a program, sign up for our YouTube Populist Dialogues channel to receive a notification when a new program is added. Thank you for watching. I hope we'll see you again next week.